Yes. Good morning. So, Miss, you're represented by um, Attorney Justin White. Yes. Were you able, Were you able to talk to him about your case? This my uh, I talked to first one I talked to. He came to to my pub and seen me. Uh huh. And my pub had one that I had pub one co on the sixteenth. They changed to this day. Okay, so were you comfortable speaking with Mr. White about your case today? Yeah, I just didn't understand. That's all right. You didn't understand? Okay, so um, Mr. White is your attorney. Did you understand that part? Yeah. Okay, and the, you're here before the court because they said that you made a call to 911, but there was no emergency. Yes, um, I told them when they first came to our house, me and our man arguing. So, and then they so, told. Them, so they told, you made the call because somebody was arguing. I and mean, yeah, we was into it. Okay, who was you? Who were you arguing with? With my old man. Oh, your old man. Okay, well, I'm gonna let you speak with Mister Mister White again about your case, and let's see what we can do. Maybe we can get you out of here today. Thank you. All right, no problem. Thank you. All right, um, Deputy, if you'll just hold Miss um, so she can speak with Mr. White again. Patrick, if you'll hold her. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. All right. Thank you. You're Thank you, Mr. White. I, I don't think we have a problem. She seems, oh, she just may need to have it explained a little bit more carefully. My problem was that she did seem to understand stuff at times, but she was going kind of in and out, which is okay. my biggest fear. Um, so at times she would understand that she would, that I was her attorney, but at other times she just simply didn't understand more simple things about the charges and things. So I just wanted to make sure I was just a bit unsure about it. Okay, well, let's see if we can talk to her again. Maybe maybe it just was a communication issue. All right. Right All right, Ms. Raise your right hand for me. Do you solemnly swear or affirm any testimony you give will be true? Yes. You can put your hand down. So, ma'am, you're represented by Mr. White, <coughs> Justin White. You're before the court on 2023CR03729, and you're entering a plea of NOLO to abuse of a 911 call. By doing so, you give up the right to have a trial by jury or judge. You give up the right to have the state prove your guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. You give up the right to have the presumption of innocence in your favor. You give up the right to confront witnesses, subpoena witnesses, present testimony and evidence on your behalf, to not incriminate yourself. And if you're not a United States citizen, a plea of guilty or no contest could negatively impact your immigration status. Do you understand all of these things? No. Do you understand all of these rights that I've heard I've said to you? Yes, ma'am. All right. Factual basis recommendation, please. Yes, Your Honor. On April 23rd of 2023, an officer was dispatched to 45 Georgia, where the incident did occur in Clayton County. Um, at that time, it was in reference to um a 911 complaint from the Forest Park dispatch. Dispatch had advised that a uh, female by the name of uh, Gwendell had been calling uh, all day and night and hanging up a total of seven times in which she called. Um, she would call and uh, ramble. They weren't able to determine uh, what she was saying, but they believed she, she may be intoxicated. Um, at that time, the officer arrived uh, to the location and uh, found Miss sitting on the floor uh, next to the phone. Um, and at that time, she was taken into custody, Your Honor. The state is recommending 12 months to serve, uh, 30 days. Part of the time served, the balance to be suspended pending no new violations of the law. All right, so Miss, I'm going to accept your plea of NOLO. I'll send you to 12 months to serve 30 days, credit for time served, balance suspended as long as you have no new violations of the law. Okay? Yes, ma'am. All right, thank you. You can go back with the sheriff's office. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. All these be a 50 grace. All right, Christopher. Yes? Okay. 
On the record in the state of Michigan versus Christopher 01446FY. Thank you, Your Honor. Assistant Public Defender Aaron Schroeder on behalf of Mr. I there is a pending competency evaluation order in this case and uh, a previous finding of unable to restore in a previous file. I did I did not speak with him. I spoke with his attorney on the file, Mr. Luke Goodrich, and uh, he would still be obviously on this file for the bond violation. But I wanted the court to be aware I did not actually speak to him because of the fact that I don't even know if he understands anything about the bond, according to Mr. Goodrich. Thank you. Sure, but don't you think you should interview him and see uh, what his mental status is for today so that I can figure out the arraignment? Um, yes, Your Honor. I so you know that mental competency is very fluid, and so I don't know what his condition is today, and probably you should check. Yeah? Yes, Your Honor. Okay, thank you. Please just chat with him, see what he knows. Thank you. I used to be at. Okay, I will bring him in. Maybe. I, uh, I believe I, I believe the assessment that the folks in lockup gave me when they, I was talking to people this morning has remained the same, which is he's not, he, he's got a disability, he's got intellectual limitations he was born with. Okay. All right, back on the record in state of Michigan versus Chris was 2301446 FY. And we are back with. Uh, Ms. Schroeder, right? That is correct. I think we need to follow up with the forensic center in this case to see what's taking so long to get his examination done. Okay. Uh, Mr. Williams is here for bond violations, and I understand that his understanding of consequences might be limited, but I think I will provide him with the information and then we'll have to figure out how we're going to proceed. As I don't know why. I don't have information from the forensic center. The order is over two months old now. All right. Mr. is ordered not to have any contact with Alyssa Sin and Seth. He is supposed to be wearing a GPS tether. Uh, Miss, do you have a tether on? Yeah, I got it on right now. Okay, good. Uh, the alleged violation looks like uh, police went to five... Reference a threats report. Ms. Sin said she was receiving threats on Facebook from Mr. Uh, that would have violated the no contact order. That this occurred about August 1st at 1.30 in the afternoon. Uh, Ms. Um, said from the night of July 31 to August 1st, she was receiving messages from Mr. And um, well, I mean, the messages say he doesn't care if the police are contacted, which would indicate an acknowledgement of his understanding that he's not supposed to be contacting her. Uh, if you violated a court order, you could be arrested without a warrant, which appears to be what happened to you uh, within the last 24 hours. Your bond could be revoked. You could be in contempt of court. Contempt of court can have a sentence of 93 days in jail and or $7,500 in fines separate and apart from that which you already face. There also appears to be a previous uh, complaint alleging that you had made a violation of the order uh, back on May 17. Um, let's see if I make, and, wait, wait, don't, don't, don't make any uh, statements right now. There's another police report here uh, claiming uh, that's also for May 17. So there's two reports regarding May 17. And then there's one additional report regarding looks like May 10. Uh, okay, that was an allegation of a phone call. Uh, Mr. has been placed on a no contact bond since May 9. And the allegation is while he's waiting for uh, a visit to the forensic center, that um, he may have made contact within the first 24 hours of being on bond, as well as several times in May and then one time recently. Uh, Ms. Schroeder, I'm not sure that Mr. should be out in the community if the tether condition is not sufficient and or he uh, doesn't want to, um, I guess, sort of understand and be responsible for his conduct. Um, I don't, 
I do not. With regard to Mr. Your Honor, I do know that he has a guardian um, who has been in contact with our office and has been in the picture, Catherine. I, he has been found to be permanently incompetent previously in 2019. I know he's been, I do realize that competency is something that can change over time, but he has been referred again as he does. He has been born with uh, a type of uh, apparently some disabilities, according to Mr. Goodrich, developmentally disabled. Um, I would, I understand there's concerns here, but I'd ask the court to consider him for a PR bond or the, because I, he is supposed to be receiving medication as well. He has not been able to get that today. In addition to the fact that he does have some significant limitations. Thank you. Uh, in reviewing the report, it appears that there is physical evidence that's been obtained by videotaping and recording uh, messages that were left that included threats to Mrs. Person. So I'm going to remand Mr. Williams until the examination by the Center for Forensic Psychiatry is completed. Uh, and I don't know why it hasn't been done again. That order is two months old. So perhaps Ms. Schroeder, his other counsel wants to call and ask what's going on, why he hasn't had his examination. And so it's, the order will say remand until examination by Center for Forensic Psychiatry and further determination by the judge of record. Uh, and then I'll leave it up to um, the judge of record to determine whether he should be released. because. Um, He's making threats, and I think the evidence of his violation is compelling. Uh, that's not me. That's not me. Stop. Okay. Uh, I guess in addition, um, this, this is a Judge Flores file. It is. So maybe Judge Flores' office also wants to call and find out what's up. I noticed uh, we had someone miss their interview with the Center for Forensic Psychiatry around the time this order was entered, and we did not receive that information until we asked about it two months later. So I don't want Ms. Williams to fall through the cracks. So definitely a follow-up with the CFP to make sure that they're aware of where he is and that he needs his interview done. Yes, Your Honor. I will note in here for Mr. Goodrich. I am doing that right now. All right. Thank you very much. All right, Mr. You're going to stay there for now until we can get your examination by Center for Forensic Psychiatry. I'm ready. All right. Thank you, Ms. Schroeder, for your assistance today.